Hey everyone, welcome to our first chapter. We're going to take a look at an introduction to microbiology and we're going to do it in two parts. In part one, we're going to start with just the basics of what is microbiology. We're going to look at the scope and uh, why it's important and then even what types of microbes we're studying here. That'll be uh, what we're going to start off with. So there are always different definitions for the same word as I'm sure you're well aware, but our textbook defines microbiology as the study of living things too small to be seen without magnification. Now biology is the study of life, so microbiology, micro means small, and so we're just look, really looking at small life. Now the truth is we get into things uh, going on inside of these living organisms, such as their, their cells and the cell structure, so we're not looking at just the organisms, but also how they work and, and things of that nature. Um, these things, quote unquote, we often refer to them as microbes or microorganisms. These are things like bacteria and viruses, which are some of the more common types. Um, one of the things I like to point out, a couple things really, but number one is that we tend to not think about these, and that's because we just don't ever see them, obviously. But it's important to recognize that these really make up the vast majority of species on Earth. Most life is fairly microscopic. We are, as humans, really amongst a small percentage of organisms that would be considered giants. Um, we just don't really think about it that way. But on a on a on a percentage basis, most living things are too small to be seen with, with the naked eye. Now, you can look at that both from a uh, number of species standpoint, the percentage of species. You could also look at it, which would even be in, uh, an even greater majority, would just be the number of species, the, sh the quantity. Um, the number of bacteria on Earth uh, is would probably outnumber people by thousands, if not probably more like uh, millions to one. Uh, maybe even more, maybe even more like billions to one, probably be more accurate. So we are, uh, things of our size, I should say, are, are fairly, uh, in, in a fairly small percentage, that is. So microbiology is looking at all of these things uh, that we wouldn't normally see every day. And it's one of the reasons why it's important, because uh, we just don't think about it, and yet they have an impact on us, and that's some of the things we'll get into. Now, the other thing I want to address, besides the fact that we are giants and we don't normally think about all these life forms, the other thing I like to address is that when we do think about them, we tend to think about them in a negative context. And I'm generalizing here, but I think for the most part, we tend to only worry about things when they affect us, especially when they affect us in a negative way. And for that reason, I think that we often only pay attention to microbes when they cause disease and when they're causing harm. And for that reason, we often refer to them as things like germs and uh, viruses or a type of microbe. We tend to use that term in a negative way. So the idea is that wh while that's true, um, one of the questions here is why is this term uh, inappropriate? Or why is it, I should say, why is it often inappropriate? And the reason is because most microbes are actually either beneficial or at the very least neutral, meaning they don't cause any harm. So they're actually either good for us in one way or another. It's not always a direct benefit, but they're they're either somehow beneficial to the earth or, or to uh, people as a whole, or at the very least they're just neutral and they don't really have any positive or negative effect, at least that we're aware of. So that's kind of microbiology in a nutshell. Study of small things, we're the giants. And we have to just recognize that most of these small things we just don't ever really become aware of. And a class like this is what, uh, where I should say, we, we get aware of those things. We bring those types of things to the front of our minds and to the front of our consciousness. And most of them are actually not that bad. Most of them are actually pretty good. Now, we will focus on pathogens but because while many are good, we have to focus on the bad ones so that we're aware of them. Now, in this next part here, just real quick, the scope of microbiology is very broad. I don't want to get into this in too much detail here because I could talk about this all day. But it's important just to realize, as I mentioned, microbiology is the study of small life. And there's so much happening at this, at this microscopic level that as a, as a consequence of that, the field has been divided into many different sectors. So everything from a medical context, uh, even to how diseases are spread as a whole. So you, you think these are the same thing, medical microbiology, public health, um, epidemiology, by the way, is, is kind of the study of how diseases and things spread. And really, these are two separate fields directly related to each other. But uh, studying them in a, in a clinical setting versus how they spread outside of those clinical settings is kind of the difference here. Immunology, how our immune system responds. Uh, industrial microbiology and agricultural microbiology are really putting microbes into a commercial context for the most part and using them to make products or enhance products. And some quick examples there 
would be things like vaccines. You could use them for uh, vitamin production. Uh, even things like antibiotic production are just a couple of, uh, of uh, examples of how these are used. Uh, agricultural microbiology uh, is studying how they affect crops and crop production and or how they can be used to enhance crop production. In fact, uh, microbes can actually be used to enhance crop production. Uh, and then environmental microbiology is really looking specifically at how microbes have an impact on the environment, which is somewhat self-explanatory there. So we're looking at it from the human standpoint, commercial standpoint, and then environmental standpoint. So with this class, we, we try and look at every one of these to a certain extent, but the truth is we'll focus on medical. We'll talk about public health and epidemiology. We'll definitely spend a lot of time on immunology. And, and we'll spend um, less time on the industrial, agricultural, and environmental, simply because uh, these first three topics uh, take up a lot of our time. Plus, not everything that we talk about here is listed. So, so that's a, ge a general overview of the scope. Now, this is somewhat opinionated, so take it for what it is. It's my kind of opinion, being very biased. But uh, at least to me, why I think microbiology is important is it starts with an understanding that microbes are ubiquitous. Now, this may not be a term you're familiar with. So, my, microbes are ubiquitous. What does ubiquitous mean? Ubiquitous means something is found everywhere. It's a very simple definition, so I'll say it one more time. Ubiquitous means found everywhere. Now, once again, you'll find different definitions, different sources, but that's more or less the gist of it. Sometimes you'll hear it stated as uh, found everywhere at the same time or found everywhere um, uh, simultaneously, meaning that it doesn't just move from place to place, it meaning they're literally everywhere all at once. Most things are not ubiquitous. Even things like oxygen uh, is not really ubiquitous. There's lots of places on Earth where oxygen doesn't exist. So it's not a term you hear very often because it doesn't really apply, especially literally in most cases. Um, so why is this significant then? Well, because they are everywhere, and everywhere we go, we are impacted by microbes, whether we realize it or not. Now, it's not always a significant impact, but microbes tend to have some kind of effect everywhere they're found, and that means that they have an impact everywhere they go. So, uh, for this reason, at least in my own personal opinion, microbiology is very important. Now, many of you are going to go into the medical field, and um, really what's expected of you is just to be kind of aware of what you don't see. As I mentioned, we're, we're giants. We don't see these little microbes, but they definitely have an impact on us. So really the goal of this class is not to make you an expert in microbiology by any means, but to simply bring forward in your mind what these are so you have a better idea of how they work and, and, and hopefully how to, to better protect yourself from them. So in the sex part, we want to look at what are the major mi types of microbes studied. And... Uh, we're, I broke this down into really the six major types here. Now, we'll actually study a few other things that aren't specifically listed here, but for the most part, you can look at them as, as really a list of about seven basic types of microbes. So, bacteria, archaea, and uh, sometimes you'll hear that uh, pronounced as the, the archaea, but I always pronounce it archaea, uh, the protozoa, the algae, the fungi, the helminths, and then the viruses. So each one of these is very different from the from the next. And these are very broad categories. And so there's lots of variation within each one of these categories. But these are kind of the broadest um, categories of at least the most common types of microbes. 